Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm with Jennifer Garibay, a recruiter at Google and a consultant from the United States. Hi Jennifer, how are you? I'm doing just fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm glad to host you on my channel and I believe people are going to learn a lot from you in this interview. Today's topic is the power of networking. I'm so excited about it and I know because I know you are a powerful networker, so this is the right topic for you, right? I, I hope so. I hope people can get a lot of uh, helpful information. I, I by no means consider myself a, an expert expert, but I, you know, I have taken a couple digital marketing courses. I have grown a lot on LinkedIn, um, and I feel like I definitely have some amazing um, insights and feedback to share that can help anyone, uh, anyone grow on, on LinkedIn and, and network better and more effectively. Wow. What exactly is networking? So networking, that is a tricky question. Um, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, um, but it can happen both, uh, you know, in person, real time or virtually. So before COVID, you know, we had a lot of these like mixer type settings um, and that was more so the way um, the way to network. And, you know, LinkedIn has always been popular, but as we, we move into COVID and this more virtual world, LinkedIn has really just continued to skyrocket. So we're going to focus today a lot on the virtual networking side, especially because we'll continue to be isolated for the uh, foreseeable, fu foreseeable future. But um, in regards to networking, to me, it's really about developing relationships. Like if you could put like a slide up, this is like networking equals relationships. Like that's what my slide would say right now. It's, it's very much so it's about who you know. Um, you know, how you collaborate with them and, and how you can help them and contribute to them and their network. So networking and the best way to approach it is to just always go in with how can you help others and how can you uh, develop, you know, fruitful relationships for collaboration in the future. Um, and the best way to do that is by providing value because uh, people will want to network with you and connect with you if you are providing them um, with some sort of service, whether that be yourself and the knowledge you have to pass on or an actual service itself. So it's about, it's about setting yourself up as someone who is, is useful to others, who helps others and who can provide others with value and then developing those relationships and capitalizing upon them. Wow. So networking is not all about personal interest. Definitely not. Um, I'd say that the best networkers out there are the ones who are trying to uh, provide their audience with the most, um, you know, the most content, whether that be like actual video content, post content, um, you know, articles, knowledge, the people who, who network the most effectively are those who are looking to give and to not take just because others then are so attracted to that. Um, that sort of warmth and hospitality and, and the knowledge and energy you can bring that they're just that more likely to want to work with you in the future. Wow. Can you give some tips on how to network effectively? Yeah. So networking effectively comes down to a few different things, I'd say. Um, I'd say step one would be LinkedIn profile optimization. So you really want to uh, optimize your LinkedIn profile. You think of it as like a landing page. You know, if you don't have a personal website, this is sort of your, your website. I mean, people go here to see what you do. So you wanna make sure you have like a great photo, a great banner that accurately reflect you um, and who you are. Oftentimes people don't scroll down to your job experience. Uh, statistics have shown that people look at the, the top of a profile and then oftentimes don't scroll any further. So you wanna make sure you're, you're including your, your skills in your banner, your contact information, other valuable information so that people can um, easily access you and network with you. So that's step one is LinkedIn profile optimization. I would say step two is making targeted connections. So let's say you're a job seeker uh, who's a coder lurking, looking, looking to work in like big tech um, and you're not quite sure how to start, but you want to connect with people. So at that point, I recommend finding people who do the job you want to do or who work at the companies you want to work at or who work in the locations you, you want to work. If there's like a particular city you're looking to move to, um, you know, make sure you're, you're targeting your search, you're targeting people who, um, who can pass on knowledge, 
who can help you, who can, um, you know, help you branch out into that area or provide you with some sort of, um, you know, knowledge, knowledge kernel, knowledge nugget to help you along in that journey. So it's about, uh, you know, making targeted connections, sending them out. I recommend 10 to 20 a day um, if you're serious about growth and sending a small message with it as well. You don't just want to send a request, especially if someone doesn't know you without providing some context. Um, you know, let them know, hey, you know, I love your content. I think it's great. I would love to connect with you or, hey, you work at Google. I'm very interested in coding. Would love to connect with you. Um, this is going to allow you to start to build your network. Uh, and it's going to be a network filled with people who are your target market. So you definitely want to optimize your profile, send targeted connections. And then point three would be to build relationships. So just continuing to touch base with people, have a lot of informal chats, have coffee chats, you know, answer people's messages on LinkedIn, really engage with your audience and those around you. And, um, you know, I always treat it like a little garden, you know, networking is like a harvest. You, you plant all those little seeds, you water them, you tend to them and you, you watch them grow. Um, and then eventually down the line, you may need some help and, and you've helped all these people and it, it just goes full circle and, and they're going to come right back and do what they can for you as well. So just developing those relationships. So you have a, a sea of a network of people to, to help you in any regard. Wow. That's powerful. How to network when you are shy. Networking when you are shy, that can be more difficult. Um, I, I am not the most shy person. So people often come to me and they're like, it's easy for you. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody gets nervous, guys. Like even people who are very confident in themselves get stuck in their head sometimes too. So it's about, it's about getting out of your head. It's about knowing that people don't care about stuff nearly as much as we think they do. You know, those times where you're like, Oh, everyone's watching me and thinking this and like, no one's thinking about you. They're concerned about what's going on with their dog or their sister or something else. You know, it's, it's, we do this to ourselves. And so it's really getting out of your own mindset um, and just really focusing on, on being confident, building your own brand. And what I mean by that is like what you're passionate and what you stand for. Um, but if you are really shy, you know, the beauty of virtual networking is that you don't have to be face to face. You're really going to get a chance to, you know, if you work better in like a text format and you don't want to do video chats with people or you don't want to make content, your chance to shine may be really in like messaging back and forth with people. Maybe you're very articulate and you can express yourself very accurately on paper. So it's about finding a niche that works for you with the skills you already have um, and just kind of capitalizing on that um, and really taking advantage of the virtual setting. Yeah. How to maintain relationships? Because sometimes we are good at making connections, but we fail to keep them. No, that is a, that's a great question as well. Um, and we're all guilty of this. You know, there's only so many hours in the day that we have to, to spend talking to people. So I recommend if you're having informal chats or if you're, you're networking with new people, I actually like to keep a log of the people who I have chatted with um, in the recent past. You know, maybe they were informal chats, maybe they're looking for a consultation for my business, things like that, but kind of keeping track of, of people that you talk to and then checking in every now and then. So, you know, if I had a meeting with someone like two months ago, I may send a follow up email and just say like, hey, hope you're doing well. Um, let me know if I can do anything for you. So I think the best thing to do is to stay organized, stay organized, stay intentional and be consistent and uh, try to reach out on a regular cadence. So, you know, maybe every week is not possible, switch it to every other week. Or if it's someone who you don't talk to very often, maybe set a reminder on your phone to check in every month. It's about, um, you know, really setting boundaries for yourself and then making sure you follow through that you can continue to, to develop those relationships. Wow. And what are the impacts of networking on personal development or how can networking help someone improve themselves? Yeah, I think that manifests itself in a lot of different ways. So, I mean, you can bolster your professional development on LinkedIn alone simply by, you know, learning content from other people. I mean, there's so many free videos, free resources out there on LinkedIn um, that really have the ability to like teach you, you know, optimization and how to talk to people. Um, so really just taking advantage of that. There's so much free content out there, YouTube as well. Um, so many different courses, you know, feel free to check out my videos. I try to give a lot of 
you know, help to job seekers when I can. So it's about going out and, and looking for those things, making sure you're, you're taking advantage. Also LinkedIn premium has amazing courses. You can get your first month free guys. If, if you're not interested in paying, you know, use the first free month and then cancel it, but take a bunch of courses during that month, especially if you don't have a job right now and you're looking for a job and you have a lot of time, be using this time to better yourself, to teach yourself the things um, that you need for your next role or something you've wanted to learn. You know, I've been practicing my Spanish during this, uh, this time working from home because it's something I've always wanted to grow fluent at. So it's about continuing to, to upskill yourself, find new ways um, and never stop learning because it is absolutely vital. Yeah. And how has networking affected your life personally? My life personally has been most definitely affected by networking. Um, I joined the Growth Academy at the, oh my goodness, at the end of September. Yeah. Um, and it's completely changed my life. I honestly, you know, joined Growth Academy to just start, you know, meeting like-minded professionals, growing my network to potentially, you know, leverage a job position later on down the road. And through being in it, I was so inspired by all these entrepreneurs and other people working so hard to build something that it inspired me to do the same. And it made me want to start my own business, which I've recently launched within the past two weeks, my, my consulting business that I've been doing with people. So it's, um, you know, having that community, having that growth has been uh, absolutely incredible and has completely changed my life because now I'm, I'm starting to grow my own thing as a result directly of networking and people I met on LinkedIn. Wow. And how did you become a good networker? So that took time. Uh, becoming a good networker takes time um, and patience, you know, sending those targeted connections, working on optimizing your profile. But I would say the number one thing to being a good networker that a lot of people don't take advantage of, and a lot of times I think it's just because they're, they're simply scared to put themselves out there, is making content. When you start creating content, guys, it's a whole new ball game. Um, you know, you're going to get 10 times the engagement if you're posting videos and uh, doing live streams and things like that, as opposed to just text posts. You know, people really like to get a sense of who you are and people like to, uh, you know, watch videos, look to people, listen to people who they feel like they understand, who they feel like they could be friends with. So it's about, you know, putting yourself out there, obviously be who you are. Hopefully that's a person who's relatable, but you know, regardless, you'll find your target audience. So don't be scared to start creating content. It doesn't need to be the fanciest content you've ever seen. If you guys have ever seen my first LinkedIn video, I was in my car. I shot it in my car and I was like, Hey guys, let's talk about opportunities. Like it doesn't need to be super nice. It's more important what you have to say. People don't care what's going on in the background. If you have a great message. So, so don't get so caught up on the production value and focus more on what you want to say to people and what value you can give them through your words um, and start making content, whether it's video content, text content, photo content. Um, it's going to change the way you network and increase your engagement uh, tenfold. Wow. So it's all about creating good content, right? Mm -hmm. Valuable content for, for your target audience and for people who, um, you know, may need to view that. Wow. And how long did it take you to become a successful networker? Well, it's, it takes a, well, it, I would say it depends on your definition of success, but <laughs> I mean, a good networker. Yeah. Yeah. It, it takes a little time. I'd say once you have the skills down and you know how to make those targeted connections, you know what, uh, you know, what an optimized LinkedIn profile takes. And if you start creating content, you're going to be a good networker right away. You know, the right kind of people are going to respond to the message you have. So it's all about just being brave, putting yourself out there and, and trusting the, the social media algorithms and whatnot that the, the right people who want to see what you're putting out there are going to find you. So, um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't say that there's any specific given timeline. Some people might take a couple months to master that stuff. Some people might take two weeks. Um, but it's really just mastering every aspect of it, whether it be the profile optimization, the targeting connections, um, or the relationships. It's about honing in on each individual part 
So if there's a particular part you need work on, definitely uh, focus on that until you feel uh, strong in that regard and you'll be a, a stronger networker overall. Okay. How long did it take you? Uh, I mean, I have been doing it now for about three months. So I guess mm -hmm. three months. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. And yeah. what are the challenges you faced when building networking skills? Challenges that you're faced with? Sure. I mean, there's, um, there's a lot of noise, as we like to call it. You know, there's going to be a bunch of people who maybe you can't help or people who reach out to you about things you may not be interested in. So, you know, make sure you keep yourself open to opportunities. You never know what the next great opportunity for you is going to look like. You know, a lot of times we're, we too easily turn our noses up at something that we don't think is good enough or we don't think is right for us. Um, when oftentimes if you give things a chance, like maybe that would have been the perfect opportunity and, and you never know until you try. So it's about, you know, finding that balance um, and then going from there. Wow. And at what point in your life did you first realize the importance of networking? So that was a very uh, recent thing for me. I mean, I would say probably like two or three months ago, I realized, I mean, I had had LinkedIn yeah. for five plus years and I had a profile oh. just sitting there, not doing anything for me. It sat there for years and I didn't touch it. I didn't really update it until about a year ago when I started working for Google. And then I started to, you know, to update my profile and keep up with it more, but I never posted content never posted content, would always just, you know, connect with a couple random people. Um, and then when I really started posting content and starting to develop my personal brand, I really realized how powerful networking was. Um, you know, you're always going to have, you, you know, you're going to work at different places. So you want to build up your personal brand. You know, you don't want to always be building up the brand of the place where you're working because that may not be where you are forever. Not that you can't support the place that you work, but it's important that you begin to stand out on your own for the things that, that you love and enjoy, because eventually when you're looking for another job, you are the product. So you want to make sure that your LinkedIn represents you and your brand well, so that when someone comes to your profile, they understand uh, who you are and what you can do for them. Yeah. Wow. You've done well then. Because yeah. you sound like someone who's been networking for ages. I, I am a fast learner, but I also have had a lot of help from, from the amazing uh, Growth Academy community. Okay. So how do you network? How do you network? Um, so just basically, I think we went over this a little bit earlier, but it's... Um, no, I mean, you know, basically, personally, how do you network? Oh, me personally, how do I network? Um, Honestly, kind of basically the same thing. I mean, I, you know, I try to optimize my profile. I always make it so that, you know, whether you are someone looking for a job or if you're someone looking for help with a resume, a consultation, I try to make my, my profile able to, you know, attract a general audience um, and, and let people know that I can help them in that way. Uh, I do send the targeted connections to people in tech who inspire me or other career coaches who I'd like to work with. And I grow my network in that way. But again, the, the biggest thing is content is king, guys. Like I couldn't start growing my network until I started creating my own content. So um, that's the biggest way in which I network is I create. I'm a content creator. And yes. so I put things out there and I wait for people to engage. And then I engage with them. You know, if you post a video, you post something, comment back to all the people who comment on you, you know, you know have a conversation with them, connect with them. Um, and make sure you, you respond. I try to answer almost all of my LinkedIn messages. If someone actually asks me a question, yeah. you know, if someone's just like, hi or whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I don't have time for that. But like, if someone actually asks me something and I feel like I can contribute, you know, I try to, to stay as in contact with people as I can. Um, so yeah, just, just really developing those relationships and, and building off of that. Well, wonderful. What are the things to avoid when networking? So what to avoid when networking? I would say you need to not send messages to people and ask for things. That is like the number one thing. Um, like personally, I can't tell you how many messages I get a day where someone's like, 
hi, read my resume. Do you have a job for me? And I'm like, I get a hundred of these a day. I can't read all these resumes. So I, I don't read them all, you know, but if someone has developed a relationship with me, if they like my content all the time and I recognize their name and I'm like, oh, I see Jeff, he's always commenting on my stuff. And then he messages me like, hey, I'm really struggling. Um, you know, I really enjoy your content. Do you have any extra tips or tricks? You know, it's about developing that relationship first before asking for help. So give before you take. And if you don't have anything to quote unquote give, engage with someone's content. That is a gift of its own. You know, if you are liking someone's content, engaging with them, it helps them to, you know, get more views. It helps them to get more engagement, which is a positive for them as well. So it doesn't always have to be that you have some sort of service to give. Um, yeah. You can also give in just your opinions um, or engaging with their content as well. Um, and then going from there. Wow. What are the best places to network? The best places to network, I would say definitely wherever you work, uh, you know, whether you work in a big company, a small company, uh, you definitely want to network, uh, you know, get to learn all the, you know, get to know all the people who work in your general space um, because they, they can go anywhere, right? You could have a boss who you love, who in two weeks goes to work at some other company. But if you have a great relationship that then opens you to other opportunities at that other place, right? Because you already have a contact there who knows you, who can speak to your work and who would want to help you. So, you know, definitely take advantage of the people who are immediately around you. Um, and then LinkedIn, you know, virtually, this is the world we are headed to. So make sure you are connecting, sending those targeted connections on LinkedIn uh, to really start to build out your uh, virtual network and, and have it be full of people who are, are in your niche and are going to be able to help you. Great. You know, some people don't network due to the fear of rejection. What advice do you have for them? My advice to them is to try and try and try and try again. You know, rejection is redirection. Um, you know, failure is not the end. You know, we, we all fail sometimes. You know, I posted a, I applied for a job not that long ago. I had an interview. I thought it went great. Um, they even told me the interview went great in the feedback. I actually posted it on my LinkedIn and, and I didn't get the job, but you know, it's important to, to be open with your audience, you know, show them what you're going through. Um, you know, everyone, I, I feel like I do a pretty good job at my job and I didn't get that role. You know what I mean? A lot of times it doesn't come down to your skills. It's not always your skills. It's not always, um, you know, any sort of like particular university you went to. A lot of times it just comes down to timing and what that particular hiring manager is looking for uh, in regards to a role. So, you know, don't be afraid of rejection for jobs and don't be afraid of rejection when networking. You're gonna get rejected. Like I'll tell you right now, if you're sending 10 targeted requests a day, half right. of them will probably reject you, but the other half won't. And, and the point is, is that you have to keep trying because if you, if you send no connection requests because you're scared, you're definitely not gonna connect with anyone. You have to put yourself out there and be willing to try um, and just kind of uh, swallow that fear sometimes uh, in order to, to get ahead. Yeah. Is networking a gift or a skill that anyone can develop? Oh, for sure. Um, anyone can develop the skills to networking. I think it's really just focusing on your, your human relationships and treating virtual networking like you would in-person networking. So, you know, very much so don't, immediately message a person like, Hey, what can you do for me? Like, would you walk up to a stranger in a room and be like, here's my resume, get me a job. They'd be looking at you like, who are you? And, and I don't, do I know you? Like, it, it's the same kind of thing. Like anything you wouldn't do in person, don't do in the virtual world either, you know, have that tact, develop that relationship uh, and things will go a lot more smoothly and people are going to want to help you if you approach it in that way. Yeah. What are the benefits of networking or why do you think people should network? The benefits of networking and, and why people should network uh, are the relationships, you know, developing those relationships um, to be harvested later, right? I think I said a little while ago when you, you plant the little seeds, you water it and you watch the crops grow, um, you know, network before you need it, you know, network now and try to give your audience value so that, Two years from now, you know, when you need a job, you've already helped so many people 
and they're going to want to help you. So it really is about giving, giving value, giving engagement, giving what you can give um, to, you know, ultimately, and you don't necessarily go in it with this mindset, but when it comes time, if you need help, uh, you then have the ability to reap those benefits because you've planted all those seeds and you've helped all those people who are going to be willing to to help you. So it's invaluable to have that that resource of people uh, to rely on in the future. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for sharing your knowledge, experience, and thoughts on this topic. That was very powerful. Yes, of course. Happy to happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me. I hope you guys learned some great tips about networking. And if you would like some more tips or to connect with me, uh, find me on LinkedIn and, and we can connect. Oh, it was a pleasure to have you as my guest. And guys, you can follow Jennifer on LinkedIn. As she said, I will leave her links in the video description. Thank you and stay tuned for the next video. Awesome. Stay well, guys. <laughs>